scary. <laughs> now I'm rich and he's still fat, so fuck you. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna be an interesting one today. I'm gonna be linking up with the one, the only, Andrew Tate. Ah, I don't know where to begin with this guy. He's a character, I'll put it that way. I'm not gonna tell you his life story, I feel as though you should all go and watch some of the podcasts which he's done on YouTube, Fresh and Fit, your mum's house, there's a few other ones. He is an interesting guy, you either hate him or you love him, he's a bit like Marmite. But anyway, he's in Dubai, just got himself a brand new Bugatti. We're gonna go check it out, he's gonna take me for a spin, and then we're gonna head to the gym, hit the weights, and maybe we'll do a little bit of kickboxing as well. Let's go. You know, something. It's got a little it's got a little Bugatti engine in it. Well, let me tell you why it was was it's totally not worth it. Let me tell you why I bought it. They said it takes 10 months for one man to make by hand. And because this has a W16, it's got two V8 engines put together. They made a little W16 engine inside, you see? Yeah, yeah. And when you press it, it's all mechanical and it's all made by hand. And it's got a little Bugatti engine. And there's one man in the world that makes them, it takes him nine months. He's made everyone and there's 60 of these and 60 of the cars, so they all match. Fuck. So I was like, you gotta do it. Take my card. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so I bought it. Yeah. So what's the reaction been like so far? Yeah, everyone's uh, everyone likes it. I mean, obviously it's a standout car. There's only 60 in the world, and this, this is the only one in the world in this color. Mm. So everyone knows it's mine. I, I've had free hotel upgrades. Every hotel I park at, they come over and say, "Oh, would you like the suite? If you leave the car out front." I'm like, "All right." So that's, <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, all in all, yeah, it's been pretty good. But I haven't really tested out too much because in Dubai you kind of have to behave a little bit, you know. Yeah, you have to take it out to the desert. Yeah. How fast is that supposed to go? Top speed? I don't know. I think that's 270 miles an hour or something. I guarantee every song I play, it's the first time it's ever been played in a Bugatti. <laughs> so this is going to be the first Bugatti where someone's smoking a cigar in the KFC drive through with two girls in the passenger seat. It's going to be the first one. So the question which I'm sure a lot of people are asking is how the hell do you even go about getting a Bugatti in the first place? It's difficult because uh, there's a lot of people in the world with money and there's only 60 in the world of these as a new build allocation so it's actually really, really difficult. I first walked into the uh, Bugatti store in, in Germany, in Munich. They had a Bugatti store and I walked in there. And I wanted to, uh, I said to him, look, I'm interested in buying, possibly buying a car. And they were like, yeah, 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 whatever, goodbye. Because they have probably so many people walk in and out, lying about the, how they want to buy a Bugatti, right? I, I said, look, give me the email address of somebody. I emailed them my car portfolio, my Instagram, my Wikipedia page, explained who I was, and he kind of half replied saying, look, all allocations are full. When we launch a car within three minutes, we just hit up our old customer list and they're all sold out and they're all full. And it was a sales pitch. I had to try very, very hard to get this car. I had to actually pitch and say, look, why instead of selling it to some shake who's gonna just put it in a room and hide it forever, why don't you give it to me so I can drive it around and be an idiot in it? And at least it's gonna be on the streets. Yeah. At least, you know, it's gonna be good for the brand. And he kind of was semi-entertained by that. And then I had to go to a meeting and explain, you know, why I want the car and it's the definition of success and I'm from nothing. I come from a council estate in Luton. I've done all this myself and I think it'll be really good for people, inspire people that I chose Bugatti as opposed to another brand. I just full on pitched the guy. Yeah. And they said, all right, well, you can have an allocation. Give us two and a half million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can spare us the other two and a half million when she's ready. Yeah, so, so yeah, if there's one thing I know you're good at is marketing. And already you've marketed this car very well. Well, 
life life is sales, right? Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you're trying to pick up a girl. It doesn't matter if you're trying to convince the guy to give you a car. It doesn't matter what it is. It, 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 if you're good at sell selling and selling yourself, you're going to do well. So I think a lot of people forget that. Like selling is an art, it's a skill, and a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> I almost got my foot down that time. It's ridiculously fast. But you were saying as well, one of the the bonuses of actually having a Bugatti is it gets you access to the network within Bugatti, Completely. all the other Bugatti owners. Yeah, so all the Bugatti owners have private events. So we'll all go driving. I think this year we all go driving in Argentina. We have armed security, closed off roads. All the planes get flown into Argentina. I mean, all the cars get flown into Argentina by plane. We're insured, everything is all handled for us, and we go there, and I'll be with all the other Bugatti owners. So that's going to be some interesting dinner time conversations. Yeah. I've already done one Bugatti dinner so far, and it's kind of very interesting when I talk to people who are completely and utterly outside of, I call it the matrix, right? Yeah. Outside of the system. But it's, it's funny, like we, we, they were sitting around and this was about six months ago and I, I didn't have my car yet, I just put the order in. And we're sitting around talking and they were laughing about things like COVID-19, COVID restrictions, flight restrictions. They were just, they, to them it's all a joke. I was like, well, why didn't they just take a jet? Like, like, like don't ask. <laughs> like, like it's kind of crazy and it's, it's weird for me because I'm from completely nothing. And these, a lot of these people are born into money, right? So yeah, I was going to say, are these people, they're self-made or they've been born into money? It's very hard to get to Bugatti money by yourself. That's not impossible. But I, I think Bugatti did say to me, I'm one of the only ones who's ever done it, you know? Mm. Um, so it's very, very difficult to do. But they do have a degree of contempt, I guess, for... I mean, people at that level of life do have a degree of contempt for the person who's still inside the matrix is still inside the system because they because the laws don't apply to them the rules don't apply to them i think most people don't understand is that we live in a in a system of society in which 99% of punishments for crimes are financial it's either a fine or if you can afford a good enough lawyer you don't go to jail so basically what it's saying is that if you have money laws don't apply because yeah. it doesn't matter right oh i got a fine a boo hoo i got a fine i'm you're a millionaire right you don't care so they they there's a degree of confusion amongst the people at the top. Like, well, why did the people at the bottom just try harder to get rich so they can ignore all these rules? Like, why do they have to comply with these rules? So it's kind of interesting to be in those scenarios because I've come from the other end of it. Mm. And it is it's certainly very interesting. And obviously, there's a lot of networking opportunities and, and opportunities to make money. I know I'll make all the money back this car costs me. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So that's, that's pretty cool. But friends, you need friends in high places. You need friends in low places. You actually need both. And I have enough friends in low places. I'm from Luton, so. <laughs> but it's a more friends in high places. You, you spend a lot of your time in uh, Romania. I live in Romania. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think of Dubai? You're in and out quite a lot. Yeah, especially Dubai, recently. Yeah, I am. Dubai is the city of the future, right? Mm. I mean, I, I can't see another city which is on such an upward trajectory. I think all the other major famous cities are either on a decline or they're trying their very best to just maintain. London was built long ago. Yeah. Now they're just trying to stop the crime. <laughs> Like they can't build it's anything so, new. It's literally so bad. It's crazy. I remember I left at a good time. I felt like end of 2019. Yeah. Since I left, I just feel like it's gone even more downhill. Yeah. When I'm in London, I don't I don't wear the nice watch. I'm, I'm well, my head's on a swivel. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you get, you know bro. Like you that. know, like because no matter how you know tough guy shit, blah, blah blah. You don't want to fucking deal with four dudes with blades. Like why would no. you? You know. So yeah, London's kind of maintaining. America, New York, LA, etc. is on a massive decline. Dubai is the only large, major international city which is on the incline, and I think it's better to exist in a society which is on its way up as opposed to on its way down. So Dubai is a city of the future. I love Eastern Europe, I love Romania, but I can't advertise Romania for the normal person. A normal person can move to Dubai and have a good life. In Romania, my life is fantastic because I'm me and because of who I know. But if you're a normal dude and you just move there, it's not going to be, you're going to be like, what is this? You know, if it's only for me because the police chief's like, oh, that's Tate's car, leave his car alone. He can do, he can speed. You know, so it's, a, it's, a, it's not a fair comparison. But um, yeah, Dubai's awesome. I love Dubai. Man. I, I completely understand why you moved here. The world's actually quite small. People think the world's big. If you didn't move to Dubai, where, where is it going to move? Where, where else is it going to go? I, maybe I would have gone to Miami. Miami's all right, but Miami's just Dubai with crime. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, I would have gone there for the lifestyle, but it's. I, I, I never really fell in love with America. I don't know. Yeah, no, to Miami and Dubai feel very, very similar to me. It's just Miami is just Dubai with crime. I, the, the greatest thing about Dubai is the peace of mind that's afforded to you with the, with the safety element, you know? So, I respect that amount. Well, 
Oh, that's a sick car, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely outrageous. The turning circle isn't great though. We try to do a U-turn and we have to like do half a turn, pull back, reverse, and then go all the way around. Every single person that we drove past just turned their heads and was like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Right, now we're gonna head off to the gym. I've come so woefully underprepared. Yeah, but Besides this is, that gym bag. But this is fighting <laughs> stuff. I'm thinking you're always like Baywatch. He always has the thirst shorts <laughs> looking <laughs> good on the machine. Uh, bro, I ain't got, I ain't got trainers. So I've got, this is just full of oil and moisturizer. Exactly, I ain't got <laughs> trainers. I only got tie boxing shorts. I'm gonna look like a weirdo. It's fine, it's fine. I have no confidence issue. I can deal with it. We're gonna do a little bit of weights and then you're gonna show me a couple of fighting tricks. He's gonna beat me up. Iron Mike. Iron Mike Thurston. I better look like you by the end of this. <laughs> Bro, I don't lift weights. There's, no, there's, there's, not a, there's not a wall to rock climb on here, you know? I don't lift weights. These are, <laughs> these are Protego Vanetta <laughs> loafers. These are my shoes, my outside shoes. <laughs> and my sparring shorts. And I thought, oh yeah, we're lifting weights. I need like gym shoes. I need thirst stuff. Bro, I don't have these. I like things. the shorts though. Thank you. Thank I, don't you. Lift, I don't lift weights. So I, I hope by the end of this session, my first ever proper weight session, I look like Mike. My first one. Okay, I'm one's enough. Enough. chest pump. One's enough. <laughs> it's interesting, like, when I walk in the gym, I feel like I'm at home. Like, this is my natural habitat. I imagine you have the same feeling as soon as you walk into a ring. Fight ring, yeah. yeah. A gym like this is unusual for me, because even when I was professionally fighting, I never had a strength routine. routine. I never lifted weights. I didn't have a strength and conditioning coach. To this day, I don't know how strong I am. I've never tried a one night bench. I've never done none of this stuff. I used to, I used to, you're a kickboxer. kickboxer. So four times champ. Four time world champion. And my, I used to do push ups, shadow boxing with maybe four or five kilos, running with four or five kilos, weighted vest sometimes. And I used to do lots and lots of burpees in the weighted vest, but I never had any static weights ever. Yeah. Just lots of punching people in the head. That was, that was it. And lots kick of, and kicking people in the head. Lots of sparring. Well, for that kind of thing. So um, it's interesting. I'm actually curious. I'd love to find out, you know, how, how strong I am overall. We'll see because my diet's trash as well. You like, you like to drink quite a bit, smoke cigars? Drink, smoke. I only eat once a day. Sometimes I put up pictures on Instagram. I, I look like I'm in amazing shape. I guess I am in amazing shape. You are, you're in good shape. And people say to me, wow, what's your diet? What's your meal prep? I'm like, bro, meal prep, KFC. Mm -hmm. My diet's not great. But I think because I, I trained so hard when I was young, when I was 20s, you build a base and then it, as long as you're not an idiot, you can't lose it, you don't mess it up. So, yeah. so I just do a little bit here and there. Yeah, also for 10 years I didn't drink. So now is oh, my really? chance. Yeah, because I was fighting. So now I drink a bit, but I'm kind of getting bored of that. Moving to a new spiritual plane, Mike. <laughs> When was the last time you did a bench press? Fuck knows. Long time ago. This is a 20 kilo bar, right? Yes. 20 kilo. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be shaky. How many? How many do I have to do? Eight. I can do it. We'll see. Right. But there's technique to this, isn't there? Yeah. So then there's two different techniques if you want to like have a, a strength focused approach and lift as heavy as possible or if you want to try and maintain all the tension on the chest. Okay. So but I think for us today we'll just try some strength stuff. Cool. So I did it. <laughs> How many did you do? 27. I have, to, I have to try and do the same as you might. <laughs> I have to try. I, I did like eight. Eight. The back is what's hard. I probably do maybe 1,000, about 1,000 push ups a day. I try and get through, but that's like when I'm on, on the computer or I'm watching TV. As soon as there's a gap, I, I, I program my mind. Like if an advert comes on, or if like if I've sent an email, I make myself do 20 or 30 push ups. Well, that'll be why you maintain your frame. And I do about 1,000 a day. I, try to do. I don't take time out of my life to go to the gym, I just kind of try and swap it in. I've noticed about you, you you're, you're always doing something you're keeping busy which i think is impressive considering you've made the amount of money you've made you've been successful you still have the drive to hustle and grind like i wake up some days and i'm like so you're chill today yeah, yeah, yeah. to the beach by the yeah. pool i never see you by the pool like you're always i can't I, i'm you're always working i'm jealous of, i wish i could do what you just decided because exactly, i could switch up because if i could wake up and if i wake up and i try and do that the anxiety i will have for not doing all the things i could have done will destroy the experience. I'll be sitting there thinking I could have, I should have. Yeah, see, I want more of that. <laughs> I need more We should of that. swap, bro. Yeah. We should swap, because I'm at a point now where I'm working for, it's pointless. Money's fruitless, I don't need it. Yeah. But I can't not do it, I have to. 
That's why I'm always jetting around the world. I am there, there, I've got to do this, got to do that, got to do that, and I'm just, I can't turn it off. Do you think it's something you can teach yourself or it's just in your head? I'm trying to try and teach myself to be more hungry. So, because I feel like I'm always striving for more, but I feel like, you know, my, my potential is here, and I'm like, here. Yeah. I know what you mean. I don't know why I am exactly the way I am. Because I'm a very happy person, but I'm not content. Does that make sense? I'm very happy. I'm not miserable. I'm not depressed in any way. I'm super happy, but also I'm not content. Like, I picked up that Bugatti three days ago. I'm trying to get allocation for another one. I want another color. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that. Maybe it's the fighting thing. I think I've kind of replaced fighting with like work when I retired from fighting. Yeah. And to be a fighter, you gotta have that crazy drive to just do ins insane things. And maybe I've swapped them out. I don't know what it is, but I can't sit by the pool. I'm jealous of you. I'm genuinely jealous of Mike. I'm saying it now. I'm rarely jealous. I'm jealous of Mike has something I don't have, and I'm jealous. <laughs> I can't do it. How yeah. many do you eight? 100 kilo, eight times, 800 kilo. Some of my cars weigh that. What's the lightest? The car? Uh, my, yeah, my, that's a lie. My McLaren's about 1,100 kilo. All right, forget about the Bugatti. What's your favorite? favorite? I can't choose. You can't ask me to do that. It's like asking you to choose between all your women. Look at this I get it, I get it. It's my favorite at the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't choose. They're good at different things. <laughs> He's been going to the gym every day for the past week. <laughs> Push up. When I was growing up, I always thought the most important thing to get a woman's attraction was my physique. And I realized it's a whole lot more than that. The dating industry and scene these days is pretty fucking mad, especially compared to what it was 10, 20 years ago. What's your advice to men to get women's attention and to get them to like it? That's a good question, and it's a long and detailed answer, and it's actually extremely difficult nowadays, I think. Because I think we live now in a state of society. Back in the day, right, you could be a plumber, but you're a bit funny, you go to the bar, you find a chick, talk some shit, buy her a pint, whatever, and you'll be fine, right? But now it's all status. It's all status. The girls want to be like, I was with Mike Thurston. That's what they want. It's all Instagram and status. So as a man, you have to be doing something to try and improve your status. Yeah, physique is one thing, money's another thing. Who you know is another thing. There's lots of different ways to do it, right? But if you're a man with truly no status in society, now it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. So you have to understand that as a man, you've got to gear your life in a certain way. And women have more options than they've ever had before in their life. Bro, you seen a chick's inbox on Instagram? It's crazy. Yeah. And then you're just messaging her. You know what's the worst thing is? Guys DM chicks and they don't even, it's like, hi. Like, like of all the work. They'll, they'll hi. see that like that. Like, like what? You think they're gonna talk to you? Like you gotta at least try. So yeah, we live in a status society now, so it's hard. One of the easiest ways to get status is who you know, right? A lot of it's networking, and if you know the right people, you can get some status at least off them to some degree. But as a man nowadays, you need to be rich, strong, smart, intelligent, charming, good friends, be able to fly around the world. You gotta compete. It's hard. It's really, really difficult. It would, it would suck to be Joe Average today. That's why I can't afford to be lazy. That's the counter side. The counter side is, although you need to be a high level man, every single man on earth with enough work can become one. That's the counter side, right? So there is, there is hope at the end of the tunnel, but you gotta get up and do it. Six. <laughs> How old are you, Mike? I'm old, that's why you can do these things. How old are you? 35. Old man. When I was 31, I ran three marathons in a row, just like bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Drunk. What do you think is the optimum age for like strength? I don't know, because I see some people can peak like when they're in their mid 30s. Yeah. It depends a lot on genetics, their lifestyle. I think it's definitely harder for me to try and keep up with the physique which I had a couple years ago, but I still believe like to have like a fully matured physique in terms of muscle mass, you're probably looking like early to mid 30s. I think after that it kind of tapers off a little bit. You know what else is similar to? My father was one of the best chess players in the world. And chess grandmasters are at their peak in their early 30s. And after they, as they get older, they, they, they lose their skill at chess. Their cognitive ability declines. Yeah, you can't, you can't be a chess world master at 50. You don't, you, your brain simply can't do it the same. Your body, and, and also they, they burn like a thousand calories an hour or something when they're playing chess because their brain's like going crazy. 
Yeah, it's nuts. Oh, right. Yeah, it's nuts. So yeah, there's a, there's a limit in chess as well. Right, how many? Six. Six. Yeah. <laughs> that starts to get heavy for me. Four? Yeah. So I do this, I've done myself proud. And I've proved that if you do a thousand push-ups a day like a weirdo while at your computer, building an empire to me millions and millions of dollars a month that you don't even need, <laughs> that you can stay in fantastic shape. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to prove you here. You've got a pull-up bar at home as well. Pull -up bar. I have a pull-up bar, yeah. yeah. But I don't, I don't do that many pull-ups. I mainly just do loads of push-ups. If I ever do weights, I'll put on like a 30 kilo vest and do burpees, which sounds easy as fucking die. Well, normal burpees is not easy. Bro, burpees are hard. They're hard. When my coach used to make me do burpees, I hated it. It was the worst thing ever. A 30 kilo vest and you'd say like 200 burpees and it'd take you like fucking an hour to finish them. Because after like 25, you're just a mess. You're yeah. in the floor gluten. Sweating, it's ridiculous. One, two, three, four. Yeah! Easy. I'm a weightlifter now. Fuck, I look like Mike. I look like Mike. We're gonna have to start. We're gonna start. Imagine if you hadn't been a kickboxer. Could have been a Mr. Olympia. Maybe. Hey? Maybe. I <laughs> would have got paid a lot more. <laughs> Fucking kickboxing's a waste of time for money. Well, it's the same. It's the same in fighting. Like you, everyone knows Conor McGregor and all those guys, but there are so many people who could whoop his ass in Dagestan or some place you never heard of, and and they're, they're broke, right? Fighting's kind of like modeling. The top two models are super rich, and there's a whole bunch of models who are just broke. Yeah. Same with musicians. How many talented musicians you never hear of? Or so yeah, it's a hard sport to make money from. Even like. Jake Paul's like very easy to hate. Yeah. But when he's like knocking people out, people are like. I called him out. I called him out. I did a call out video. It's on my YouTube, and I, I wanted to fight him. But truthfully, truthfully, I respect the guy. If I were to fight Jake Paul, I would take it completely seriously, like a real fight, and I'd whoop his ass. I'd beat him, Jake. But because uh, because what he's done is he's done a very clever marketing spin. I'm just a YouTuber. No, you're not. You're a young man with unlimited money who's dedicated his life to learning how to fight. The dude can fight. Yeah. <laughs> he's sparking people. Everyone, everyone thinks he's just some YouTuber. No, he isn't. He's in Puerto Rico training with the best boxing trainers in the world every single day. The guy can box. I'll whoop his ass. But he's very clever with who he chooses. He chooses people smaller than him, old, yeah. that have a pedigree, like you have from X UFC, but not boxers. And he's clever. He's, man, some marketing, but he's made a lot of money. I can't, I can't hate on the guy. What do you think uh, Tommy Fiori pulled out? He pussied out, didn't he? The, the pressure got to him. He pussies not. He hasn't got his, his, his brother's brain because his brother doesn't give a fuck. But I guess it's easy to not give a fuck when he's seven foot tall. So. He's got a lot of pressure. Even his dad was saying, like, if you don't win, then yeah. he's like the disowning pressure, him. Yeah, the pressure got to him 100%. And that's the thing about fighting. Fighting's a mental game, man. It's, it's so much more scary than people think it is, actually. be sitting at the back, waiting for your turn to go in the cage. The guy before you gets wheeled out. He's fucked. <laughs> you see him come in the changing room. They're trying to resuscitate him. And you're like, all right, your turn. You're like, oh, bro. All right. We got game face. Game face, you got to fight. Ooh. Still would like to experience. Yeah, fight? I've had like little, I've had some street fights and scraps, yeah, yeah. but never in the ring. And that's one thing, because I like new experiences. Because yeah. when I do something new and something challenging, I learn about myself a lot more. Yeah. And you kind of discover who you really are as a person. Fighting is the number one thing that will teach you more about yourself than anything else. I hear people talk about, oh, I, I go traveling to learn about myself. What do you learn? You learn how to book a hotel and bang some South American four. That's what you learn. <laughs> Congratulations. You're still a dickhead. <laughs> but with, with fighting, you actually learn real things. You get to learn what you're really made of. Because every guy has this idea. Every man has this idea in their mind. Oh, if I get angry, you know, if someone hits me, I get angry. All right, cool. You'll learn if that's true or not. Because <laughs> you'll see, most people, it's not like that, right? You, you learn about the fact that I had 87 professional fights. I was scared before every single one. You know, like, the, the, I, a lot of people think that it's, you're a coward if you're afraid. I disagree. You're a coward if you're afraid and then you don't do it. If you're afraid and do it anyway, then you're not a coward. I was scared for all of them. I was scared from my last fight, I and mean, I'm a pro, right? So you, you, you learn how to deal with fear, you learn how to see what you're really made of, you learn how to deal with loss, you don't get to win every fight. 
And, and losing a fight is the worst thing that's possible for your ego. It hurts. It hurts forever. It, and, and also... And people treat you a bit differently as well. Bro, man, you can't lose a fight in front of your girlfriend. She'll leave you. Yeah. It's just like instinctive. When my girl said, I'm coming to the fight, I was like... I don't like you that much anyway, but you smoke the guy, so it's fine. You lose, you know, you got prepared to lose your chick, everything. So you, it, there's something about it, and it's the, it's the purest form of competition. And, and this kind of changes how you view the world now, because I don't find any other sport interesting. If someone said to me, come play basketball, I'd be like, but even if I win, I just put a ball in the net. I didn't fuck anyone up. No one's bleeding. Yeah. Like, I didn't beat them. Whereas fighting is the purest, it's how you actually win. I, I, I actually beat him at something. Like, you, know, you know what I mean? It's, like it's me, that's yeah, me by myself. I beat him by myself, just me. No luck, no win, no football team, no ball. It makes all the sports obsolete. It's kind of strange. But also, I don't know why I started and why I did it, because everyone says, why do you start fighting? Because it's a dangerous thing to do and there's no money and it's stupid. It's a shit career. Man, I, I can tell you so many stories. It's a shit career, because you, you can fight and you can have 10, 11, 12 good fights and you're fighting for a thousand, pounds eight week training camp for a grand at the end and then you finally get a big chance and you lose or you or you get injured or you break a leg or you have a cold or whatever and you lose and then your career's over yeah fuck it's the worst financial decision but I just want to punch people so <laughs> well, let's do it but if you ever want to fight I can get you a fight I can get you a fight Except I, I can, no, no no like in, in terms of my business partner I own some casinos in Romania and my business partner owns RXF, which is the biggest, which is the UFC of Romania, cage fight. So if you were to want a fight, you could message me. We get an opponent contract and everything. Any rules you want, we get it done. If you want a fight, you want a fight, you just message me, I'll say, here's your date, Mike. See you there. <laughs> and that's how it goes. You sign and you just turn up. That's how it goes. Eddie and, uh, you know, Eddie Hall and Thor, yeah. they're fighting here in like a week or two. Isn't that the world's scariest man the, fighting? The, the, the world, two of the world's strongest men. But this, doesn't this prove my point, right? The two world's strongest men were competing at lifting weights, and then as soon as they didn't like each other, they wanted like, no, we need to really compete in the purest form of competition. Yeah. We're gonna fight. Yeah. It's like as old as time. Anyway, two, right? <laughs> see how much rest I got. You see that? Yeah. You see that one? You see that one? <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Two reps on 130, now you know. It's good to do. I'm glad I've done it with a, a professional here for safety reasons. Soon I'll have some thirst shorts. I'm not even wearing mine. It's great. I'm trying to push his products, I didn't even fucking wear them. <laughs> This will probably be hard. Yeah. This will be like, so if you do a wide grip, that's probably the hardest variation. Okay. The easiest one, easiest I would is like say this. is underhand because you engage in a lot of biceps as well. Squat 
10 or 11 years ago, I tried to do some squatting. I had a big fight coming up. I fucked my lower back mm. so bad. I don't know if I did it wrong or what. My lower back was a mess. And it was a mess to the point where now, it's 10 years later, still, even just doing them, I got a tinge in my lower back. Yeah. I don't know how I fucked it. The squat and the deadlift is the exercise most people will mess up on. They try and lift too heavy with incorrect form. And that's when they just they load up the spine too much. And my back was red. Even just now, I got a twinge. But it, I don't think it's mu I don't think it's bone or spine. It feels like a muscle thing. But I also don't have a clue what I'm talking about. So <laughs> don't my, I don't have a clue. But yeah, I really mess my my back up with squats. So now if I squat, I squat just body weight. But I was a pro kickboxer and I didn't kick through a baseball bat. Have you seen that video? Nothing. I've got a video on my Instagram. I snapped a baseball bat on my shin. You, you kick with the shin here, the bone. If it's not on Insta, is that, is that, I'm missing out on some pussy. So I need to get it, <laughs> get it on Insta pronto. He puts it in between two 20 kilo plates. You see, and he holds it. I was Smoking super scared. I was super scared to see me. I'm like, how do I kick it? And he's like, Tate. Beer is the enemy. If you half kick it, you're gonna break your leg, right? If you half, you have to go through the wood. You can't let the wood impact yeah. back. You have to really just go for it like it isn't there. So it's, it's kind of mental. And he's got a play. Yeah, he's forcing it down and sitting between the plates. Oh, no, that's at the top though. Like, like yeah. that's not really yeah. harder. The top there. Eat shit. Yeah, so I snapped it in my thick. So, does that mean I have weak legs if I can't squat? I don't know. That's my excuse. Maybe I have weak legs, but I can kick through a bat. So, that's my oh. thing. That would have that that broken for, my For chin. Mike's next video. <laughs> I would break my leg. Are most of your viewers and fans and stuff, they're men on YouTube? So. I'm trying to bring in more of a female audience, but I think in general... That's why I'm here, right? Because yeah. <laughs> they love me and my views. <laughs> I think uh, in general, more men tend to watch YouTube. How many? 15. Right, never done a dip in my life. Up Wait. and down. Down like that. Excuse my upcoming poor form, ladies and gentlemen. On my shoulder, though, As you, like, 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 I could easily hurt my shoulder yeah. if I'm not careful. Does that make sense? A lot of people they injure themselves they're too deep, and then they just fuck up like they rotate and stuff. If you did the push-ups, you got a pull-up bar and a dip station. That you would build a decent physique with that. Yeah. Because you'd be hitting your chest, your back, biceps, and from this, this is a bit of lower chest and triceps. All right, so I'll buy one of these. Yeah. Sorry, Mom, no Christmas present this year. <laughs> the money's been allocated. Please. Dip station and Bugatti. Yeah, dip station and Bugatti. That's all I've got in my life. <laughs> a homeless man by the side of the road with his dip station next to his Bugatti. <laughs> the most push shots I've ever done in my life was in a jail cell in Stevenage. So without giving too much detail, I get arrested, blah, blah, blah. Innocent, of course. They take me down to the thing. The guy who was checking us in, was a fat fuck, real fat, arrogant police officer bullshit. And I was telling him I shouldn't have been arrested and I was innocent and everything. He goes, well, we don't often make mistakes. He's come checking me and taking my fingerprints, all this crap. And I saw that he had the cameras for the cells in the back. So when I went to my police cell, they gave me some book, worst book I ever read. I've already done a video of that on YouTube, fucking awful. So I'd read three pages, 50 push-ups. Three pages, 50 push-ups. So I did that for like an hour, and then when they took me back out, the fat guy goes, oh, Iron Man, to make fun of me. Yeah. So they're like, all right, cool. So anyway, I ignored him. So I thought, now I know he's watching, and he's jealous, because he's fat as fuck and I'm not. So now I have to do the push-ups. So after like three hours of this, I'm at the point where my arms are like jelly. When I'm getting up, look at the camera like, I'm fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Just pushing out these awful push-ups. I, I was there for 23 hours. I slept for like six, seven hours of it. So the rest of the time, it was three pages, 50 push-ups, staring at the camera for the fat fuck. And I guarantee today, he's still a fat fuck. Officer fat fuck of Stevenage Police Station. You ain't got a baguette, have you? No. Did I even go to jail? No, you failed with your investigation. You should've put me away. You should've. I was guilty, bro. You're dumb as fuck. I did a bunch of push-ups. Now I'm rich and he's still fat. So fuck you. 
<laughs> you ever done this? Like one time, but I did a uh, boxing last year. I got a hang of it. Yeah. But do, like, do you know why? Do you know why boxers skip all the time? Stay bouncy. Yeah. If someone's trying to hit you, the best way to not get hit is to move. People have this idea that you can block, and I, I want everyone to understand that blocking punches is a bad idea. You don't want to block. You want to move. So you got to skip, and you got to skip with that. Like you have to not try. You have to just like exist. Let's see how long Mike can skip like that using all that energy. What is that like? I'm using a lot of energy. You are. You're jumping. You're because you're jumping. You're not like bouncing. Like it's gotta be like rhythm. Like you're just like. I feel like I'm gonna chop my toes up. It might <laughs> happens. You gotta kind of just like. I mean, bro, as well. It's just like it's not. It's not deliberate. If that makes sense. I'm pretty impressed. That's fine. So now we know Mike can move out of the way of all my punches, and he's gonna win. Like you're doing like together. It's very. You're jumping, and that's why you're using energy. Yeah. It's got to just be like you're bouncing. Like, you're almost like bouncing between the feet. <laughs> it look, it, when you do it with two feet, it looks so different. Yeah, exactly. Like like, like a fight, like you're, you're bouncing on the balls of your feet. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm by the skipping rope. <laughs> Footwork. Footwork's the most important thing in fighting. Even boxing, even though you punch with your hands, a good fighter is all from the legs. Punching power is from the legs. Your ability to defend yourself is from the legs. It's all legs. It's all about how you move. If you have good legs, good footwork, if you move well, like, like Floyd doesn't get hit. That's not because of his head moving, it's because of his body, his feet. Punching power is all leg related. Getting your technique right is gonna improve your punching power far more than like training, physical strength. Does that make sense? I'm gonna teach you how to box in 10 minutes. You've got two weapons, your right hand, you got, you got a sniper rifle, and you got a machine gun. Machine gun you can miss sometimes. Sniper rifle you got hit. The difference between a machine gun and a sniper rifle is the reload time, right? Machine gun you can miss, because you can just quickly reload it. Sniper rifle, you got fucking bolt action, all this bolts. Exactly the same thing. Every single, every single weapon has a reload time. So when you're fighting as a professional, the reason I don't just go in there and start swinging is because if I miss, there's a huge reload time and I'm gonna get hurt, right? So your quickest weapon, that has the, low, the lowest reload time, is jab, it's gonna be your left hand. So boxing stances, left foot forward, right foot back. The heels of your feet shouldn't touch the ground. Your front heel can sometimes, but in general, perfect technique, your heels don't touch the ground. It's all in the balls of your feet. So it's like calf activation. When I was training, he put ink on our heels. And if, you, and if you saw ink on the mat, we all got fucked. So your heel can't touch the mat for hours. Because when your heels are off the mat, you're the most springy, you're the most bouncy. You can move quick, right? Your right hand is gonna go up and it's gonna guard your chin. Your left hand is gonna be out a little bit, a little bit more forward. And the very basic premise of boxing is find him with your jab. And as soon as you find him, throw a power shot. That's boxing. Very simple version. Look, now there's a thousand different little technical, technical <laughs> changes we can make for, to make that better, but that's the basis of boxing. And the idea is, if you can't hit him with your fastest weapon, you're probably not gonna hit him with your slower weapon, right? So it's jabs, catch him, and when you, hit him with the, when you catch him with the jab, all right. So that's what we're gonna work on first. Feel it land, feel the power shot. You, you got a gum shield in already? I'm ready. <laughs> you try and catch me with a jab. Jab me. Good. As soon as that touches, as soon as that touches, yeah. as it goes back, the right hand comes out. Boom. Twist at the end. Why twist. Why twist? To increase your punching power. There's a difference between an amateur and a professional. A bullet is so deadly, not because of the amount of pressure it has, but because it's such a small surface. If you reduce the sur surface area, you increase the pressure. So what most people do when they throw a punch, they don't think about how their hand lands. So stay still. If I land with the flat of my hand, or if I land with one knuckle, you feel the difference. It's yeah. the same amount of force. But it's concentrated, you see? Mm -hmm. So if you whack, whoosh, and it's one knuckle, it snaps the bone. And that's why you twist, because it aligns your knuckle. It aligns your knuckle better. If you keep it straight, it's going to be the flat of your hand. That, that's a massive difference. It's massive. People don't know. People don't realize it until you think it. That's how people get cut. That's how they fracture orbitals, because they catch one good bang with the knuckle, and it just snaps. The bone breaks. It's too much force concentrated in a small area. So if I'm punching, let's say at 1,000, 100 miles an hour, let's say, I'm gonna do more damage if that lands in the smallest area possible, like a bullet. So that's why you twist, you wanna get your knuckle in. And even with the glove on, you can feel it. I can feel with my glove on, if I land knuckle, I can, I can feel his face snap through the glove. So you wanna really twist the knuckle into his bones. So Mike's about fuck. to fuck me up. I have no idea. And you wanna land with the, this knuckle in the middle if possible, that's it. These two can break, this one won't break. So you jab, if you miss, Bring it back. Don't go and leave it out here because you're going to be open for a right hand. See? Mm -hmm. See the right hand can come over the top? Bang. So jab, if you miss, back. 
If you touch, as soon as it comes back, right hand forward. Mike's gonna beat me up. Should I be wearing a gum shield? Why not? Go on in. He's gonna. Well, I've got all my hands. You missed. You gotta catch me. You gotta catch me. It's like a chicken with Rocky. You ever seen Rocky when you have to chase the chicken? It's the same game. Boom, there was the right hand. So you missed. You didn't throw it. You landed. Yeah. It was the right hand. So you touch. You always follow. You gotta train your brain. But if this touches something, that follows. Because if you touch me with this, you know where I am. You know I'm there. You know that's me. And this is going to be longer than your jab. This is going to be all the way long, like this. And you're going to pivot, twist on your foot. Boom. All the way through. If your jab misses, you don't want to throw that because it's going to be open for counters. If you land the jab, whack. Good. 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 Right, now we're going to hooks. There's two kinds of hooks. You can hook like this, which is all about the knuckle, like we talked about. So there's less physical power, because the way your arm works. Doesn't have as much force, but your knuckle lands better. Mm -hmm. Or you can hook like this, which is more physical force, but it's harder to get the knuckle in. So that's more personal preference. You're probably going to like to hook like this. It's more natural. Jab, cross, left hook. Boom. You see how they all load each other? This loads this. This loads this. Make sure to keep your right hand up when you hook because the number one counter for a left hook is a left hook. If you hook me, hook me hard. That's how we're trained. <laughs> so it's like as soon as I feel it, we throw. So keep your hand up. Nice. That right hand up. Oh, good, you're good, going. Good, good. Again. Good. The right hand up. Nice. Right. Now we're gonna work on your defense. Yes, it's shit. If my number one weapon is a jab, you have to learn to negate the jab. You negate a jab by parrying. So people who don't fight have this idea that you just keep your gloves up to protect yourself. But the problem is, is that that doesn't work. Because if you cover up with your gloves, cover up, mm -hmm. like uh, cover your face, right? If I, if I punch, not even, if I punch 20%, right? If I'm actually going, just like, it's, your, your, your face will be a mess. So the idea that you just cover up doesn't work because if I'm landing knuckle, I'll break all the bones in your hand. Your glove will go into your own head. You can't just stack and stay there. You can't against someone who can't fight. Against someone who's big who can punch, you're gonna get fucked up just the same. You have to move. You have to like move with it. Even if you block, you have to like roll with the punch to take the power away from it. So with the jab, you don't just wanna let it hit you. You wanna parry it. And we parry it with our rear hand. So, we got fighting stance. Jab me, slowly, at my face. Anything, whenever I say anything, yeah, punch for real. Good, okay, again. Jab again. Good, okay, again. I don't block with my front hand, because look how it leaves me open for your right, over the top. So I block with my back hand. So my, my, my power hand, I block. So jab, I tap it. So tap. No power, no force, tap. A tap is enough to take it off course. The reason I don't do a big correction, jab, if I do a big correction, you can probably get a hook round faster than I get my hand back. Yeah. So I just want to tap it out of the way. So jab me in the face. Jab me in the face. Jab me in the face. Good. Again. Good. Again. Again. Jab me. That's it. Just tap it. That's how I stop. And we're taught in boxing school, as soon as I block that jab, to jab back. Right? Weird. With this. Hand. So jab me. Boom. Again. Boom. Again. Or I'll hook. Again. Body, whatever. So it's bang, bang, yeah. bang, 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 bang. That's how we're talking, right? So you're gonna block the jab with this hand. Three gum shield. No gum shield. Perfect. Well, Mike look good with one tooth missing. We're about to find out. You're gonna have to punch at five percent. <laughs> You'll be alright. Don't I don't miss. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> so when I jab you, so fighting stance. Relax. Keep that hand there. I sit that hand there. Block it out. Tap. That's it. Tiniest. Less is more. Tiniest tap. It's too much. Your arms moving all the way down here. Boom. That's it. Good. 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 When you got it in front of your face, keep it. Keep it here. Because if you put it in front of your face, like if it's here, if it's well, if it's here, I fake a jab and I hook. Because as you get better, people start doing fakes and doubles, all this bullshit. Good. 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 
Now, as soon as you block, jab me back. You hit me. You can hit me in the face. I'll come with I'm gonna get punched for 15 years. It doesn't bother me anymore. I'm used to it. My nose has been popped. It's fine. Good. 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 Now, we're gonna add another little thing to it. The reason I wanna come at you is, Jeb, if I do this, you can't attack your arms in the way. You can't throw a hard punch with this. Your own arm's in the way. You understand? Mm -hmm. But I, get, I can counter here. Oh, yeah. I can counter here. I can counter here. So I wanna be as close. I wanna use my inertia and my weight to come forward to increase the power of my punch. You understand? So when you block the jab, you come at them. So if we were fighting for real, we'd be here. And when you jab me, jab me in the face for real. Jab me in the face for real. Hard, fast, good, jab me, jab me, good. Okay, and go. That's when, I, that's when I come at you. So you block and come forward. Does that make sense? So now when you block the jab, come at me. Beat me up. And you can either throw a jab back or you can throw a left hook as well. Left hook's another one. And then we'll do body punches and then you're out of box and then you're a professional. Right. World champ. He's, he's a good coach though. Like, I'm learning quick. Sense? I'm learning quick though. If you know why you're doing it, it makes more sense. Yeah. A lot of boxers just say, do this, do this, but not explain why this should be done that way. So, slowly I jab, come forward, and jab. Perfect. Good. 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 Everyone knows hitting in the head. Every punch you can throw to the head, you can throw to the body. Same. You can throw right hooks to the body, but they're a lot less effective than left hooks. Because you're different. So if I do it with a little bit of force, the left probably hurts more mm -hmm. than the right. So the left body hook is like the knockout, it's the turn off button. It's probably the, my favorite punch. Every fighter who fights long enough knows it's much worse to get hit here than to get hit in the face. If you eat one of these, dumb hook, you get hard. If you eat one of them properly, it just it takes, it's like money in the bank. You hit in the first like, round and you feel it in round five. It just fucking hurts forever. It's, it's, it's like a stitch. Is the opponent intensive well, when they get hit? Or is there sometimes you'll get them when they're not even intensive? Exactly, and then they're really fucked. Yeah. So if they know it's coming, they can prepare. But if you catch them like on a counter, or you catch them with a breathing in or something, it's over. So left body hook is, is the number one primary body punch. So I've been rocked in the face before, so I know what that feels like, but I'm not being properly... I'm not saying I want it, <laughs> but I'm, I, I can't imagine what that feels like. Uh, again, don't. All right, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have plans for the rest of this afternoon. Yeah. So that's the left body hook. Then the jab, just like you do the face, you can do the body, and you aim right here, just below, just on the sternum. If I jab your body, I jab to the sternum. So what, if you were fighting and I was pro, I jab your head, jab your head, and you come in here, right? And you got the body hook, which is the same. So that's basically it. Those are the three most important body punches. You can do body crosses, but they're risky because they need to be very open. This is my face is very open to your but I wouldn't recommend them first. But that's it, so you can hit the head, you can hit the body. So now we're gonna spar. He knows how to box now. Now we're gonna fight. Nice. One, last, one last little little sparring session. And we're done. Rules of sparring are, I'm not allowed to hurt you, I'm professional. You're allowed to hurt me. If you knock me clean out now on camera from everyone, I deserve it. This is my life's work. So do not concern yourself with being polite. Don't worry about hitting me too hard and me getting mad. I've done this my whole fucking life. I'm not gonna get mad if you hit me, I don't give a fuck. So I want you to try your best because if you're not trying, you're definitely not gonna hit me. You understand? Yep. Punch me, beat me up, okay? It's gonna be interesting. Beat me up, imagine it's for real and you hate me and it's on. Beat me up. Perfect. Perfect. Two minute time. <laughs> Beat me up. For real. For real. Beat me up. Ready? Ready? Alright, go. Hit me. Hit me. Good. 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 Head forward. Good. Beat me in the face. I deserve it. No one likes me on YouTube. Beat me up. Almost. Good. Good, good, good. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> hands up, hands up, hands up. Good. Good, good. Hands up, All right, good. Good. Good, good, good. Face up, face, fuck that face. Good. Come on. Hands up, come on. Hit me, good. A minute left. Good. Good, good, good. Whoa. Last 30 seconds. Good, good, good. Hands up, hands up, hands up. Good. 
Good. Go on. Good. That's it. 20 seconds. That's it. Good. 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 Almost. Hands up. Hands up. Oh. Oh. And die. Oh. Good luck, bro. Fucking hell. Champ. Champ. You got it. Easy. Scary. Fighting him. Fucking hell. And it's more tiring than it looks as well. Yeah. Fucking hell. I mean, the body shot and the bop right in the nose, I was like... <laughs> Fuck. You did good, man. You did good. Okay. You did good. I feel, I feel like every man needs to experience it's, it's, combat. It's a, yeah, it's an amazing thing. And also, like, although fight gyms are scary and intimidating from the outside, nearly all the time, they're the most down-to-earth people you can meet, man. No one's going to beat the shit out of you. It's kind of like your gym. If you walk in, the guy's really big. Is he a cunt or is he usually cool when you say, oh, can you help me with something? With a, they're probably like, oh, yeah, I'll help you with this or I'll, I'll, I'll spot for you, whatever. If you go to a fight gym, it's, you're not going to get the fuck kicked out of you. They're not like that. They're going to teach you little by little. And yeah, you'll learn through pain, but that's how life works. You learn through pain with everything, don't you? Yeah, you learn through pain with fucking heartbreak and fucking financial ruin and fighting and everything else. But yeah, it's the best thing you can do as a man, absolutely. I, obviously, it was my life's work, so I love it very much. I still miss it, but it was good to go a few rounds with Iron Mike. <laughs> next, I, I'm going to watch it back. Next time, you got go, next time when you got a gum shield, we'll go for, we'll go, go for real. Fuck. Nice one, bro. You did good. You did good. When you, when you hit me, like, I was all spicy, just like... Yeah, yeah. And this is the reason fighting so hard. The reason fighting so hard is because it's you know, the only thing in the world where you have to reprogram your body's natural inclination. So if, if you take someone and teach them how to run, even though they don't know the technique to be the best sprinter, they already know basically how to run. You already basically know how to swim. You know how to like basically do it. But the human instinct on how to fight is actually completely wrong. You put your head up to look big, you lay or you swing low to get more power. Like everything you do, it's all, you have to reprogram your base instinct. And it's hard because you go back to the base instincts of getting hit and turning around because you got, because you got skull. So you think your skull will save you, but it won't. Because like, it's all these base things you have to reprogram. And that's why it's so difficult. You're reprogramming your base level instinct. The way that every man thinks he should fight and we've evolved to fight doesn't work in professional fighting. You have to reprogram, you got to get rid of all that and reprogram with something else. So with me, if I get caught on the nose, my inclination is, the first thing I will think is, if he hit me in the nose, he must be in front of me. So the second I get taught, tapped, I throw back. So I don't think to turn around or anything. I'm like, the second I get touched, I'm attacking. Because I know that he has to be within attacking range. And that's why when you watch pros fight, there's so many combos, so many punches flying at once. Because they'll get hit and go, okay, he must be here, or he must be here. It's like an instinct you learn. It's, it's interesting, and it, it is scientific. Like, if you look at someone like Floyd, he's had an amazing career for so long because he doesn't get hit. The art is not being a tough guy. The art is not getting hit. You don't need to be a tough guy. You need to not get hit, not get touched. And that's how you have a long, long career. I've had 87 fights and my nose is it looks bad. Good. It, looks it looks all right. No surgery. No surgery, nothing. My face ain't that bad for 87 fights. And I, and I have kicks and knees and everything. So you can, it can be done. So where can everyone follow you on social media? Yeah, so Instagram at Cobra Tate. If it's still there. <laughs> yeah. It, it comes and goes. Yeah, Instagram at Cobra Tate. Um, YouTube at Tate Speech. At Tate Speech is where I give my musings and my knowledge to the world. And then I've also got another channel, Tate Confidential, which is like my daily lifestyle. It's probably the most overfunded, underwatched YouTube channel in the world. <laughs> there's, no other, there's no other YouTube channel in the world where we'll spend a million dollars in a day and you get like 15,000 views. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. So that's Take Confidential. It's the most overfunded, least watched lifestyle vlog channel on YouTube. If you want to watch that. And then we have Take Speech, right? give out my knowledge and that kind of thing. And then obviously my private networks as well. I'm in the War Room and Hustlers University. You can learn more about them on, on my Instagram or online. Yeah, my, uh, everyone check out the War Room. Yeah. Big things happening there. Big things happening, yeah. So, awesome. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video.